Hey guys, you probably already watched the first part of Scott County, Tennessee. Here's the second part. Hope you enjoyed the previous one. Just in case you hadn't actually seen the first one, uh, we're actually going to be focusing on a few sections of Scott County. Helenwood, being one of them, is an unincorporated community within Scott County, Tennessee. The population taken by the 2010 census showed a population of 865. Helenwood was platted in 1859 under the name of Homestead and was settled as a coal mining community. The origin of its current name is unknown. So the last thing that we had covered in our previous video was the New River Company's mill and the coal company. And that was back uh, from Bull Creek to Norma. So from here, we had actually ended it completely discussing the fish from the boilers. All of the mill and the principal buildings were lighted by electricity. There was also a street lighting system. The principal buildings had hot and cold water running and steam heat furnished from the boiler of the mill. Two school systems were also available. One was private and the other were regular. The private school, in addition to the basic skills, offered piano, organ, and violin lessons. The regular school system employed local teachers while the private school imported teachers from Ohio, Virginia, and Georgia. The commissary was equipped to handle the entire needs of the community, even a factory that built caskets. The only color they offered was gray. If a store-bought casket was not desired, the company would furnish a handmade coffin without charge. These coffins were made by the company carpenter Sam Burnett, covered with white cloth or black muslin. Black muslin was actually the most popular color used. The New River Lumber Company carried the idea of thoroughness and proper care of its buildings as the construction and maintenance of its houses, which it owned and rented at a reasonable figure to its employees. The company owned 87 houses. The general color was slate with white trimming. In the arrangement of the houses, the conventional method was avoid. There were no long streets of houses in a straight and narrow file. Instead, they were distributed in picturesque confusion through a white oak grove just above the mill and near the base of Gray's Mountain, the mighty eminence that overlooked the community of Norma, the sawmill, the lumber yard, and that part of the New River Valley. The sod walks were five feet wide, made of white oak lumber, two inches thick, and kept in good repair by employees under the instruction of foreman William or Bill Newport. There were several buildings of unusual interest. The bungalow occupied by general manager Frank G. Norcross, Clubhouse, Yeiser Clubhouse, Ingalls Bungalow, and Fuller Bungalow. These structures were from products of the sawmill. The interiors were of cherry paneling wainscoting with beams of chestnut overhead. Ingalls bungalow had tapestry between the upright beams. The Yeiser bungalow had a massive river stone fireplace. The most noted was the Norcross bungalow occupied by general manager Frank G. Norcross. It stood and still stands on a hill overlooking the valley of New River. From its base stretched some of the richest valley farmland to be found in any country. The clubhouse was a large two-story structure containing the library and auditorium with a large stage for entertainments. The upper story was used for a hall for the Masons, Oddfellows, Knights of Pythias, Knights of Columbus, and the Boy Scouts. In addition to the large band mill, there was a hickory mill which manufactured automobile wheel spokes, wagon wheel spokes, wheel hubs, and artillery wheel spokes. Also, there was a clothespin factory employing women mostly. Mr. Farrell was the general manager. The hickory mill was used for hickory timber and the clothespin factory used the beech and sycamore. The vast amount of dogwood timber was cut into stock for manufacturing bobbins and shuttles. The town and mill site was purchased from Fowler Hatfield by the New River Lumber Company in 1900. Norma was a town of changing names. Where the name originated has not been recorded. According to postal records, the site was Skullbone, Tennessee when the post office was established December 17th in 1878 and Joseph Hatfield was appointed postmaster. On April 5th, 1887, Nettle Hammond was appointed postmaster. On December 17th, 1915, Norma was changed to Norcross and William Shannon was appointed as postmaster. The name was changed back to Norma on June 21st, 1919, with William R. Shannon remaining postmaster. Before there was a Scott County, there were people living along the creeks, in the coves, and on top of the ridges in the area that became Glenmary. 
Two of the creeks, Webb and David, were named for early settlers. Some of the first settlers living along Black Wolf Creek at the head were named the following. Lee Wallen, Hamby, Young, and Peak. Henshi Redmond lived below where the Black Wolf and David Creek join, the area that now belongs to Dr. George Klein. The Davis family had extensive land holdings in the area and above Joel McCart Place. It was on Dave's place that a grist mill was operated by water power for grinding corn into meal. The McCart and Webb families were also among the early settlers in Morgan County before this area became a part of Scott County. Matthew Young lived in the campground area beyond Coal Hill. He was a very influential man in the early community as there was a church and a school provided on his land holdings. He was closely associated with early Methodist circuit writer A.B. Wright and was a relative of W. Jabe Crook from Ohio. Jabe Crook and John Heaps from England opened the first coal mine at Coal Hill in 1878. With the coming of the railroad in 1800, the building of a sidetrack to tipple the coal and coke production began. In 1884, Jabe Crook sold his holdings to a group of businessmen from Lexington, Kentucky. The new company became Glen Mary Coal and Coke Company. Coke a grayish-black porous fuel was brittle, hard, and produced intense heat without smoke and was much in demand for steel making. The year 1880 was the year Glen Mary got its name from a railway official who had two daughters, Glen Mary and Mary. He combined the two to make Glen Mary. This was the year the first post office was established by the same name. Before that, the post office had been Redmond and Black Wolf Creek. By 1806, there were 400 people living in Glen Mary and about five times that many at Coal Hill. By 1888, there were disagreements between the workforce and management at Coal Hill. In 1891, a contract was entered into the do-away with periods of shutdown at work. There was a Knights of Labor lot in the halfway area for men to camp out on when workers were put out of company housing. At the beginning of the coal operation, there were no skilled workers in the area. The coal hill production grew with the output of coal from the mines from 5,750 tons in 1885 to a peak of 18,543 tons in 1890. By 1889, this company accounted for most of the coal dug in Scott County. The coke production began in 1885 and continued until 1904. During the 1890s, production dropped greatly, varying from 7,000 to 14,000 tons annually. In some years, only half of the ovens were fired. A, a major problem was the lack of abundant water supply. Production was halted when a nearby creek dried up during some of the especially dry years of the late 1890s. Eventually, a partial solution was found by damming the creek near the coke ovens. This blue pond outlives the Glen Mary Coal and Coke Company, which was destroyed by the Great Flood of 1929. Although the Glen Mary Coke was of high quality, the amount produced was small in comparison of the larger coke works in the region, making it not profitable to continue production. After 1904, many of the workers of the ovens went to the brick plant at Robbins, which seemed to be getting a good start in production. From a bustling, thriving town of about 2,500 to 3,000 little remains, all were held together by the manufacturing of products of natural resource, coal, which could be used up, left with memories of what the area used to be. Hey guys! Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button to get more videos from me.